Welcome to this session on integration of variable wind power generation into the power system. My name is Paul Sørensen and I'm professor in wind power integration and control. After this lecture, you will be able to tell about the successful growth of wind power. You will also hopefully be able to understand some of the basic challenges of uh, operating power systems with large scale variable wind power generation. And finally, you will be able to explain the role of electricity market, of balancing and of reserves in the power system and how they are affected by the variable wind power generation. This slide shows the fast growth of uh, wind power. In 2013, wind power supplied 3% of the total global electricity consumption. In Denmark, uh, however, in 2014, so last year, wind power covered 39% of the electricity consumption, which is a, a world-leading uh, record. And the target we have in Denmark is by 2020 to supply 50% of the electricity consumption from wind power. And in, in 35, the target is to supply 100% of electricity from renewables. Now, these are very high numbers, but actually also the um, wind power development in Ireland is very impressive because Ireland is not like Denmark, strongly interconnected to neighboring countries, uh, which makes it even more impressive that they can today, or last year, uh, produce 19% of the total electricity consumption on the island from wind power. This graph uh, shows uh, the case in January last year, where there was another record with 84% uh, of the uh, electricity during that month supplied from wind power. And what, what we see is that this corresponds to uh, 236 hours uh, or 32% of the time, actually we were generating more wind power than what we were consuming. And this is of course only possible because that we are strongly in connect, interconnected to neighboring countries and we, Denmark is participating in a well-functioning Nordic market where our neighbors are buying this wind power. And then when wind power is not producing, then we can buy cheap hydropower in, in, uh, in Norway. Until today, most of the wind power has been installed onshore by far, but now the offshore development is going very fast and it is uh, going to increase uh, to a massive installation offshore in the not so far future. This is illustrated in the two maps we have here. To the left we see the expected development of about 40 gigawatts offshore in uh, North Europe by 2020 and to the right we see uh, about 100 gigawatt offshore by 20. 30. What we also see here is that the offshore wind power is very concentrated. This massive amount of offshore wind power is concentrated it in, in relatively uh, small areas. And this means because the wind turbines will see similar wind speeds in, in these areas, the total summed power will fluctuate more than uh, what we are used to see from, uh, from onshore. Uh, wind power. I will now show uh, a video where we have done some uh, simulations based on uh, on a weather situation we had in 2009 and we are simulating how this will affect the power fluctuations coming out from the offshore wind power in 2020. What we will illustrate with this animation is the situation when a storm is developing and passing uh, over the North Sea, how this will affect the, the total wind power generated by the offshore wind turbines uh, here in, in this area. The thing is that when a storm is passing, then uh, usually wind turbines will shut down at a, at a certain wind speed and this will be uh, illustrated in blue. But we will also, what we will also show here uh, in red at the same time is the situation where 
if the wind turbines are not shut down, but they are uh, powered down to produce uh, less power instead of stopping completely, then uh, it will affect less the total uh, generation of uh, the offshore wind power. And that will be shown in red. Uh, so we can say the, uh, the state of the art is the blue and uh, the more intelligent uh, way of controlling the wind plant will be shown in red. So if we now start the animation, then we will see how the wind, how the storm is uh, approaching here. And we see in both uh, cases the wind power is increasing. But then we have a sudden drop in the blue case because the storm is passing. But in the red, we also have some reduced power, but not at all as much. And what we see now is that the storm is uh, passing by and then the wind turbines are restarting uh, and continue to produce uh, in a normal way. The last sl slide will show the role of electricity markets and balancing and reserves in a power system with uh, large scale uh, wind power. And we will use the Danish example uh, to illustrate this. In the Danish system, we have to cope with the forecast errors that we have on wind power and balance uh, this. So what happens first is we are, in, in, we are looking at the hour of operation here, and then we will see uh, how the, the story develops. The first thing that happens is that the power is traded on a spot market, which is done the day before the hour of operation. This is illustrated over here, and it is done based on a prognosis that we have at that time, this is the green curve we, we see down here. Then, uh, during the day of operation, there is an intraday market, which is actually not used so much uh, today. But on this market, also the independent power producers, they can also trade and balance because they, they may have uh, things to adjust, not necessarily wind power forecast errors, but maybe, maybe other uh, plants have have stopped or or you name it. Uh, so there is a possibility for the power producer to to trade uh, when he knows better based on an intraday prognosis. Now when we come to the hour of operation then the transmission system over operator takes over the responsibility because now it becomes very important that we have a balance between produced and consumed power in the power system. And what uh, happens there is that half an hour before the hour of operation, Energinet, the Danish TSO, is making a plan for how to balance the system. And this is done based on an hour ahead prognosis, which is also shown here in the graph. Uh, this is what is uh, shown with blue. And then, uh, Energinet is, is buying regulating power uh, and, and balancing uh, to balance according to, to that uh, prognosis. Now something may happen uh, before the hour of, uh, of before the actual real time of operation and then uh, there might be also some online uh, uh, real time balancing based on online prognosis. But most of the balancing actually takes a, a place uh, an hour uh, before the hour of operation. So th this is a, can be a smaller adjustment. Now, finally, uh, there will be, the final production will not be perfect uh, compared to the hour ahead forecast. This will be the black curve here. And as you see, it, it fluctuates a little more uh, than what is forecasted. And that will, st there will still be then some, some imbalances and they will activate our automatic reserves in the power system which are um, allocated by the transmission system operator also. So by the end of the day, because the automatic reserves will also have some response time and also limited uh, volume, there will actually be uh, always inevitably a, f a final imbalance. And uh, this will be shared between uh, the interconnected uh, countries. And if we want to look uh, more into how that uh, imbalance is, then we can do dynamic simulations. So 
what we have uh, talked about in, and learned in this lecture are, first of all, about the successful growth of wind power until now and also in the future. Also, some uh, understanding some basic challenges that we have with operating power systems with large scale of wind power generation. And finally, we have illustrated the role of electricity market ba balancings and reserves.